I awoke early, like we always do when working the mines. We gathered around the entrance and descended to start chipping away at the face. Six hours into our work, when a knocking noise came from the rock walls. A fellow miner told us, Get out! Do you hear that knocking? Just as we left, we heard the cave collapse. That day, I became a believer. The Tommyknockers are not well known. They're tiny men that used to warn the miners of cave-ins or possible dangers. It's not the whole truth. It was 1849, folks, 1849. California, 1849. The gold rush had just begun. The gold rush was the first time people came from all over the world for one common purpose. The goal was gold. Rivers of gold. Sweet, sweet gold. With so many cultures colliding, religion and beliefs were a plenty. Lots of them. Most of the people that were there were immigrants from other countries that brought all of their own cultures into it, have superstitions of fairies and ghosts and banshees, and the fact that whenever they came over in the 1840s, that they would bring their own culture with them is completely normal. It changed California, transformed it. When panning for gold wasn't enough and the easy gold was gone, the 49ers moved to a more drastic means for the gold hard rock mining. In the dark, in the caves, wow. Deep in the mines, the men would spend 10 hours a day working by candlelight. Six days a week for a measly three dollars a day. Some of the miners would have disorientation that escalated into paranoia. Especially if the miners had died in the mines prior. The ones that didn't get out died or some did. Um, some mines were 50 to 100 feet underground as a start. Extensive information is contained on this model, including over 367 miles of excavation. In Cornwall, they believed in these little men, or these little, they call them piskies, these little men who could be kind of devilish. They could be um, hard to work with, but oftentimes they were the ones they, the miners felt were their good luck charms, so to speak. And they would be down in the mines. You didn't really see them, but what you knew was that they would be knocking on the walls. If they heard those, they knew the Tommyknockers were telling them, get out of the mine. So they would leave, and in leaving, they felt that you know this was what saved them, the Tommyknockers, these little guys. The term essentially applies to the little people that were either beneficial or gremlins, uh, bad people. So the good side of the Tommyknocker was the fact that they could warn the miner of an impending disaster. The bad side, if you offended a Tommyknocker, you essentially brought out the gremlin. And that's when the Tommyknockers would steal your tools or steal your lunchbox, or cause some other misfortune to occur for the miner. They also, something else that the Cornish people eat are pasties, which are meat pies, it's, and it's got meat and potatoes and onion, and if you're lucky, as my grandmother always said, put a little bit of, of parsley if you have it. Mealtime, the only part of the day we stopped working. Eating our daily pasty, I remember breaking the bread off and placing it on the ground to oblige the Tommyknocker before we returned to work. As I sat up, grabbed my helmet, I looked down at the ground where I placed the bread, and sure enough, it was gone. The myth is that as the miners were working down inside the mine, as the rock began to stress and there was an impending cave-in occurring, they would hear a knocking noise, and that's actually the hard rock beginning to fracture. 
the thing is, is that because we have technology right now, we know that it's the, the popping and the booms and the and the like the clicking. We all know that that's the tectonic plates moving or like some kind of shift in the ground because of the water. A lot of science. Yeah, science. But it's a lot of displacement in the earth. But I am sure that there are people today who still believe in gremlins and Tommy knockers. Some spooky stuff, people. Spooky stuff.